Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Merry Christmas. And in this episode, I give you all the secrets to one of my most popular photos. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and Merry Christmas to all. My name is Serge Ramali. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful cities of Paris, France. Right now, I'm in the US. First, I want to tell everyone, have a great Merry Christmas. Christmas is just around the corner. This year has been amazing for me. I was so happy that I got some really good deals working with galleries and books and my channel doing a lot better. Thank you for all your support. I got lots of email this year. I have not been able to answer to everyone. So sorry for that. I try to answer as much as I can. I wish you some great holiday seasons and have amazing Christmas and an amazing new year. All right, now I usually do two tutorials per week. If you want to get the raw file of this episode and all the past episodes, all you have to do is click here on this link and you will subscribe to my newsletter and you will get access to all this. Now, if you just want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just click here. In last episode, I showed you some use of photomatics to give you like an illustrative look on a Yoda from Star Wars. Check it out. This week, uh, I want to talk to you about a photo I took in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago. This photo happens to be one of my most popular photos on 500px. It had over 25,000 views in 24 hours. So a lot of people liked it and the way I retouched it was a bit special. I know that not all the photographers do that, but I will do that. I'm going to give you all the secrets of how I retouched this photo. And this is my Christmas present to you. A couple of things before we get started. Uh, I just want to ask you a favor. If you have any shopping to do on Amazon and if you go to my website and click here on the banner that's on the top here on photosearch.com and click here, that's going to take you to amazon.com. I will get a commission and it will help finance all the free tutorials, presets, raw file I can give you. So that would be amazing if you can just click on that banner. It will help support the podcast. Now, I have a new contest coming out. So if you click on tutorials, when you're on that page, you want to make sure first to log into your account, click here and uh, load some of your photos. You can click on my photos and just load some photos. And once you've loaded the photos, you will be able to go here in competitions, click enter now. And on enter now, you will be able to submit your photos. Voila, that's just what I want to brief you before we get into uh, the uh, tutorial itself. The um, contest is on interior design. Send your best interior design photography. Uh, it's only for this weekend. It ends Sunday night and the winner gets exposure on my YouTube channel, which has now over 200,000 subscribers. And of course, he wins the interior design photography course. If he already has this course, I'll give him some of the same value. So that's the contest for this weekend interior design. Let's get to the tutorial. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So today I want to talk to you about a photo I posted actually yesterday morning on uh, 500 PX. And uh, I'm not only going to give you the raw files, but I'm going to give you the preset so that you can create this type of look on any of your photos. And I think it's interesting because this photo, this is the, the homepage uh, of 500 PX uh, this morning. Uh, I'm, my photo is 99.8. That means it's the biggest score I ever had. It's number three on the homepage. So I guess people liked it. I had 15,000 views in uh, less than 24 hours. And uh, so I want to show you, I mean, I'm not saying that just to show off. It's just to show you the, the use of 500 PX because they have this 24 hours challenge where every photo, uh, you know, gets noted. And when you come closer to 100, you're already on top. What's going to happen, I think I posted that photo around 11 o'clock. In half an hour, that photo is going to get minus 20 and it's going to come down, so nobody's going to see it. But I still got 15,000 views in 24 hours and I have a link to my YouTube channel. So it's a way for me to promote my work. And you can do that. That's the amazing thing with 500px is you can just, you can just do that. Uh, if you want to create a 500px account, you can use my username, Ramily Surge, and you will get a discount on the 50, I think it's $50 per year. But 500px really brought me a lot of attention and I just wanted to share that. And not only I'm going to share that, but I'm going to share you how I did this photo. Okay, and the secret behind it. So let's jump over to Lightroom. That's the original unretouched raw files. I was with my friend Matt Shell from Lucasfilm. Amazing, amazing photographer. And uh, after touring Lucasfilm, 
we went down to this beach, which I was looking for because I came to San Francisco only once. I don't know the area at all. I've seen this photo of this beach on the bridge. And it was funny because it was just right after the rain. So nobody was on the beach. Nobody except that young lady that just happened to walk into my frame as I was trying to shoot the San Francisco. And let me open up the shadows. And the good thing about it, well, it's a bit lagging. Anyway, the good thing about it is that she was uh, walking into the frame and there was no footstep except hers. I mean, there's a bit of footstep here on the right. Uh, oh, let me see. I'm sorry. I was on the wrong thing. Uh, let me open the shadow. You see, there was a bit of footsteps here, but on the foreground, like on the immediate foreground, the water was cleaning it up all the time. So she just walked into my frame and I shot the photo and I'm like, oh, it's this is so much in, more interesting as a composition because there is a lady, there is footprints. You know, it just makes a cool photo. You have the perspective of a human being toward the bridge. You have the food that's give like what we call a leading line. You know, it's like the message of the photo is like a lady doing her jogging, you know, on uh, in front of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco by herself. It's a cool, uh, it's a cool, simple message. And that's probably why the photo uh, works so well. I, I never had such a score on 500px. So I was really surprised. I mean, I liked the photo, but I didn't expect it to be so popular. So anyways, the way I retouched it, and it's funny because, you know, usually I like this very sort of, age, not HDR, but pretty, you know, clarity, um, I would say contrasty photo. And this one, I went a complete different uh, direction. You know, I always try to do new things. So what I did, for, if I took some notes, because I honestly, when I retouched this photo, I kind of like went random and tried different things and just happened to, you know, I happened to have a formula that kind of worked. And this is the complexity of Lightroom is sometimes you get, you know, stuff you don't expect. But so I took notes of what I did and I hopefully I can recreate it. So first thing is um, I went on to the daylight uh, as the white balance. I did my plus 100, minus 100 as usual. Then I did my whites and blacks um, with uh, the whites was around 60, I think. Something like this, around 60. And the blacks uh, were around minus 6. Okay, just now we, we are starting to have contrast on this photo. I mean... We have more data, but then what I did is I, I went to clarity and I put clarity at minus 35 so that the whole photo would be a bit, you know, um, sort of soft. Okay. Then I did the vibrant minus six, sorry, minus six around and, and saturation minus 46. I heavily desaturated the photo. The reason why I heavily desaturated the photo is because I have a rule in photography, which is that if the colors are not amazing, then I go for black and white. So I was gonna go for black and white, but I said, no, you know what? I wanna go for something more subtle than black and white. You see, that's zero saturation, that's minus 46. Minus 46 uh, gets the photo not completely black and white, but then I saw the colors were a bit boring. So then I jumped into split toning, and I, uh, I went to split toning and I did the U, uh, on this around 37. So for those who don't know what split toning is, basically it's adding a color cast in the highlights in the brightest part of the photo. And I did a color cast in the shadows in the darkest part of the photo. So I went, uh, the saturation, I went about 56, something like this. So pretty strong saturation. And let me enter the exact number. And I, the U was 37 and the saturation was 56. Okay, that means that I added in the highlights part some, uh, you know, sepia type of look just in the highlights of the photo. Then on the shadows, I went the opposite. On the shadows, I added a U of 233, which is pretty blue with a saturation of 34, so not, too, not as much saturated. So I added basically blue, on, uh, blue in the shadows and orange in the highlights. It's kind of like... It's my version of the Hollywood look. The Hollywood look is more tint greenish in the shadows, the Michael Bay look, and a bit orange in the highlights. I added sepia and blue. Okay, but the, the fact that you had some highlights on the top of, uh, you know, of a, a lower saturation, the, the split toning then sort of takes over. It's not, so yeah, it's just like, it's basically just a look, you know, a look on the photo. Um, then I went into heavily integrated filter. What I did is I, uh, I did first one filter on top. I went to clarity and uh, I'm, I went to clarity and I went minus 32, about minus 32. 
so or, or minus 35 so it made it made the top of the photo the the you know the the cloud very sort of silky um then i did another one on top of it another filter so i'm just drag and dropping on top of it uh, about this size on and on this one i open up the shadows so to make the the, the whole part the, this whole first part pretty bright and i added even more oh sorry um yeah and i think i boost the exposure a little bit just a little bit not so much and added a bit of blue just a little bit of blue some it's not exactly that but it, that was a bit the concept of the photo um and actually i added in you can add this over and over and over again i added uh, but i'm not going to do it i'm just going to add sorry a minus clarity of about yeah 16. so we have a very very you know um uh, here uh, i don't know how you can call this you know very hazy sky uh hazy sky but on the bottom i did the opposite on the bottom i did the opposite the first thing that i did there was uh, I went to uh, exposure and I managed exposure just so that we closed the photo a little bit. Maybe not that much. I don't remember how much I did it. I have to compare to the original, all right. And then what I did is, and that's important. I added a new uh, graded filter, but this time I added plus clarity. Let me, let me go to clarity. I added some plus clarity. Uh, and even maybe some sharpness just to make this first part very sharp so that we have a contrast of clarity here and non-clarity there you know sort of you get the the idea okay and uh let me see this is the original photo how we touched it and this is so oh yeah okay. i i framed it a bit different so i was more on the girl i uh took probably with this would step out made it a little bit more panoramic and uh something like this. It's not going to be the exact retouch, but you know, you get a sense of how I did this. It's uh, cropped it different. You know what, what I can just do is press command C, check none, because uh, it's hard to get the same crop. And I can just, that's a little trick I give you. You just have to make sure that process version and crop is copied. And then I'm going to press command V. So I'm only going to copy and paste the same crop that I had in the original photo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and in the original photo, I had a lot more haze going on. But what I did this is I did it with a brush. I took a brush and I went to exposure and added minus clarity and plus exposure. And just I had I, I even made things even brighter with the brush to because when you add exposure and minus clarity, it's like adding a bit, you know, haze. Uh, so I did that and I a new brush this time. I didn't add clarity, just a little bit of exposure. And I added just a little bit of white here on the water. Not so much, that's a bit too much visible. So I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit, just to make it shine. I'll make the water shine just a little bit more. So it was something like this. And uh, yeah, that's what I thought of did. So before, yeah, it's pretty similar. I think on this one, I'm I'm still a little bit brighter, so I can just you know boost. Uh, I can just add some more brushes, and it's good. You know, when when you start doing local brushing, uh, I'm just gonna make the whole part a bit brighter like this, and just turn it down. That's a bit too much. Uh, something like this. Okay, and the whole idea was to make a contrast between a dark bottom with a lot of clarity and the top one very hazy because it was a bit already hazy but somehow the camera didn't capture it you know uh so it's not exactly the same retouch but i guess you get the content it's pretty similar it's pretty similar and you know and that's how i reached a third photo on 500 px you know pretty crazy was really happy about that so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the presets and i'm going to create a preset for you guys so that you can use it and i'm going to give you that raw files in a smaller format not exactly the full 36 million pixel. I'm not gonna give you the full format. I'm gonna make it smaller uh, because I might end up selling this to a gallery. And so, you know, for commercial purposes, I cannot do that. But I'll give you like a 2000 pixels raw file so you can play around with it. And I'm gonna create a preset. Uh, I'm gonna call it user presets. I'm gonna call this one San Francisco. That will be the name of the preset, San Francisco. And um, I'm gonna take the white balance, the basic tones, 
the clarity, the sharpening. Um, now I'm not going to add, well, yeah, actually you might add, you know what? I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to add, uh, colors. I didn't do anything. Graded filter. I did. Oh, the brush. It doesn't take the brush. So I'm going to give you the graded filter, but you won't get the brush. Uh, and, um, uh, basically, and I'm not going to give you the, uh, the cropping either. Well, the cropping is not there anyway. Yeah. So I'm just giving you the white balance, the clarity sharpening that should do the trick. Uh, we're going to create it. Check that out. So, so I'm going to click on create. And uh, if you go to this photo, which is another version of it, and I click on San Francisco, I should get closer to the look. Oh, I forgot a couple of things. I forgot the white balance, probably. No, white balance is fine. I forgot the split toning. Okay, now can we add the split toning to this? So let me go back here and go back to presets. Uh, uh huh, it's not. Oh, yeah, split toning. That's what I forgot. Create. So now if I go to this, and I click on San Francisco, oh, Untitled Presets, that's the one I just created, I guess. Yeah, now it works. Okay, so that Untitled Preset, which I'm going to rename as San Francisco, is what I'm going to give you. Where's the raw file so you can play around with it? And you can try. You know, the whole idea, well, I was going to call it 2, San Francisco 2. The whole idea of the presets of this photo is really a contrast between, you know, between um, solid and hazy, between, you know, rocks, you know, heavy textures and not heavy textures. You know, it's just another way and, you know, not too much colors and, uh, you know, the dreamy look kind of. But for the dreamy look to work, you don't put it everywhere. You just put it, you know, where there's clouds and, you know, try, try this look. It's kind of cool. Okay. Also, I'm very happy. I have this new course coming out called The Art of Composition. I was in Mexico a couple of weeks ago and I did a course on composition. Here is a little trailer. Hope you like it because I do. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm very happy to announce that I have a new course coming out called The Art of Composition. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Mexico City doing fine art photography for gallery. And I shot some of the behind the scenes so you can see how I compose some of the photos. I will show you on each photos what worked, what didn't work. For me, composition is one of the hardest things to learn and to teach as a photographer. And on this project, I have done my best to really share with you the rules I'm using and what really makes a photo being a fine art photography that's going to sell or what's a photography who's not going to work. I hope you love it. I'm really happy about this course and I'm sure you're going to learn tons of things. So there you have it, the art of composition.